This is the new Q1 Pro from Chidi Tech. It's a fully enclosed, high-speed Core XY 3D printer running Clipper firmware, with a touchscreen, a chamber heater, and a high-flow hot end. If this spec list sounds familiar to you, it's probably because you've been exposed to Chidi's other printers, or a whole host of comparable alternatives. But the Q1 brings some clever new features to the table that have this contending for my top pick as best all-around printer at this price point. Things like tangle detection and filament diameter monitoring set this apart from other similar machines. Bear in mind that Chidi did send this to me at no charge for a review, but no money changed hands and the opinions expressed here are my own. If you've been around for a while, you know I tell it like it is. I'll tell you when a printer has issues downright sucks, or just shouldn't exist at all. Not long before now, Chidi released their X3 series printers, which included the Smart, the Plus, and the Max. These machines were a reflection of increased market pressure from the likes of Bamboo Lab. Chidi was forced to move quick if they wanted to retain their market share. What resulted was a solid lineup of fast, capable printers. But like most rushed jobs, some corners had to be cut and mistakes were made. The mid-range X Plus 3 took the brunt of the impact, with a scathing review from James at Cloud42, in which he pointed out a major design flaw. The Z-axis motion system was connected directly to a plastic frame. As the chamber heated up, the plastic would flex, resulting in a horrendously inconsistent first layer. To their credit, Chidi was quick to address the issue. They halted production and made the necessary changes, adding metal reinforcement to the bottom frame. They made right by their customers too, offering them a replacement or refund as desired. The second iteration of the design proved to be much more stable, but still, the design of the printer was in constant flux. In the months between, the lineup has seen a variety of other improvements. The XSmart 3 had an exhaust fan added to help regulate chamber temperatures. The Max has received a new bed, switching from fixed magnets to a magnetic sticker a change intended to address the divots in the mesh resulting from the strong attraction to the spring steel sheet. It has also received a new tool head shroud with better part cooling, a new leveling probe, and perhaps the most important change of all, the belt tensioning mechanism has been reinforced. This in response to reports that the plastic parts were failing prematurely. And most of these changes have trickled down to the X Plus too. We've come a long way in a short time. But where does that leave the Q1 Pro? Is this Chidi's redemption tour? A clean slate to bury the baggage of their previous blunders? Perhaps. At 245 cubed, the Q1 Pro falls somewhere between the Smart and the Plus in terms of build volume. It comes up short of the 256 cubed of the Bamboo P1S, but at $350 less, it's certainly priced competitively. So let's take a closer look at the specs, and then I'll tell you whether Chidi got it right this time. The external structure is a plastic shell built upon a metal frame, a familiar aesthetic. There's a top removable acrylic lid, and a front door which has a full 180 degrees of rotation. The footprint of the Q1 Pro is larger than the P1S, despite having a smaller build volume, so that's a knock against it if you're tight on space. The spool holder is located on the rear, but an extra bracket is provided which extends the position out to the side of the machine. This is a nice touch to address a common complaint, but it's a trade-off. The filament dry box from the X3 series is no longer supplied. New to the Q1 Pro is the addition of a filament tangle sensor. This detects increased resistance in the filament path and will pause the print if the extruder can't overcome it. In my testing, it worked as advertised. The print paused and the tool parked when a tangle was detected. The filament runout sensor has been relocated from the rear of the machine, as on the X3 series. It is now incorporated within the printhead. Rather than a simple limit switch to detect filament presence, this is a Hall effect sensor. It measures the strength of magnetic attraction between these two pieces. This means it not only detects filament presence, but can also measure filament diameter. It doesn't appear to be properly calibrated, however, because the measurements are outside the expected range of 1.75 plus or minus 0.05. The Clipper documentation provides a reference for calibrating the sensor, as well as logging the filament diameter, so this would be easy enough to resolve. As far as I'm aware, there's no way currently to dynamically modulate the extrusion multiplier according to the filament diameter, 
but perhaps we'll see that functionality implemented in the future. Besides a slightly different form factor, the extruder is largely unchanged from the previous generation. It has two oversized drive gears, providing a large contact area with the filament. These gears appear to be stainless, not hardened steel, so I'm not sure how well they'll hold up to abrasive filaments. Chidi emphasizes the compatibility with carbon fiber filaments in their marketing, so until I can do some long-term testing, I'll just have to take their word for it. The heatsink now has a pass-through for improved cooling and features a bimetallic core, two features intended to eliminate heat creep. The cylindrical ceramic heater is replaced with a flat ceramic heater, making it more akin to the Bamboo X1C hot end, but with a max nozzle temp that is 50 degrees higher, 350 on the Q1 Pro versus 300 on the X1C. The nozzle has a volcano form factor. It's got a tip of hardened steel with a stainless steel body. I'm honestly not sure what the advantage of this would be over just having it all be hardened steel. It would make more sense to me if this were brass with a hardened tip since brass has better thermal conductivity. If you have an idea, maybe you can let us know in the comments. The melt zone is 20% longer than on the X3 series, which would presumably give us a higher max flow rate. In my testing, the flow rate was only marginally better. At 14 cubic millimeters per second, it falls well short of the 19 of the stock bamboo hot end. I thought it might be printing on the cold side, so I ran a temperature tower test to verify. The results looked okay all the way up to 240 degrees, so I boosted the temperature and ran the flow test again. I achieved a slightly higher 17 cubic millimeters per second before the extruder started skipping. This was a disappointing result, but as my previous testing has shown, 15 cubic millimeters per second of flow is about all we need with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle to maximize the performance of these printers, so we've at least met that threshold. I talk all about that in my Panda Revo video, if you're interested in learning more. The tool head cover has been updated to use magnets instead of latches, making it much easier to remove. It uses the same 5015 radial blower as on the X3 series, but has an improved shroud design. The motion system is a core XY configuration with 10mm stainless steel rods and genuine Gates belts. The belt tensioning mechanism has been improved. It is now spring-loaded, enabling automatic belt tensioning. The Z-axis is properly fixated in a metal plate, with lead screws for motion and two smooth rods on either side for stability. The two Z-axis steppers are independently controllable, as opposed to being coupled by a belt, a feature new to the Q1 Pro. This provides the ability to automatically tram the bed, at least in one axis. Three points are required to define a plane, so it's still possible that the bed will be tilted front to back. Without the third motor for three-point leveling, as on other setups, I'm not convinced that this is any better than just having the Z-axis lead screws coupled by a belt and driven by a single motor. Even with the two-point leveling, the deviation on my mesh was 0.35 millimeters, not insignificant, with the back being slightly higher than the front and the bed not being particularly flat overall. It was a much better result, however, than obtained on my X-Max 3, which required manual leveling with the dial gauge to get within a reasonable range of deviation. But despite the less than perfect bed level on the Q1 Pro, I still got a perfect first layer, so clearly it's good enough. Bed meshing is accomplished with an inductive probe, but the Z-offset is calculated automatically using the nozzle as a probe and a series of strain gauges under the bed. I'm not sure why they felt it necessary to include an inductive probe, when the nozzle probe could just as easily be used for mesh generation. The build surface is double-sided textured PEI with a magnetic sticker underneath, no fixed magnets to ruin the mesh. At the rear of the chamber we have an exhaust fan, but no carbon filter, so it can regulate chamber temperature, but it will just blow the polluted air out into the room. This definitely feels like an oversight to me. There's also a large auxiliary part cooling fan, which feels like it moves a lot of air. This has become a must-have on high-speed printers, in order to account for the increased cooling demands at higher print speeds. The biggest change from the previous generation is the addition of a purge bucket and nozzle wiper. This is akin to the Bamboo X1C and P1S. The difference is that the purge waste is contained internally. I actually prefer this because it makes it easier to manage, rather than having the poop shoot out the back of the printer. The nozzle wiper is spring-loaded, allowing it to retract out of the way when not in use. This leaves it looking a little flimsy, 
but it gets the job done. Instead of a silicone wiper as on a bamboo, it uses a wiping pad that appears to be made of some sort of foam. Time will tell which solution needs replacement sooner. Beneath the nozzle wiper is a chamber heater. This will provide a warm environment for printing warp prone materials like ABS. The chamber heaters on the X Plus and X Max were heated with a dedicated 24 volt DC power supply. The Q1 has an AC voltage chamber heater, which makes heating quicker and reduces the number of power supplies. It took around 15 minutes to get the chamber up to 60 degrees. In my testing of the X Max 3, I could never get it to reach the advertised 65 degree max chamber temperature. Under the hood of this Q1 Pro, we have a 24 volt 350 watt power supply. The brains of the operation is a custom 32 bit control board with an integrated Pi clone, handle the clipper computations. Downstream of the main board, connected via CAN bus, is a tool head breakout board with an RP2040 MCU, an accelerometer, and a series of JST ports for connecting the print head electronics. The main board has provisions for an ethernet connection, but no actual port, which is a bit disappointing considering that the X Plus and X Max have one. Instead, a Wi-Fi dongle adds wireless connectivity. Remote control is possible by accessing the web interface, which uses Fluid as a front end. The printer firmware is a cheaty specific flavor of Clipper, which is based on a relatively old version, 0.1 dating back to 2021. They've bundled the firmware binary and printer configuration into a single file. When placed on a USB and inserted into the printer, a bootloader is executed on startup to initiate the firmware update. As of the latest version, it's also possible to initiate this process completely wirelessly using the new online update feature. This is a first, as far as I'm aware, for consumer clipper printers, which generally employ the manual method for firmware update. Since the printer configuration files get overwritten upon updating, any saved parameters will as well. You'll thus need to rerun input shaping and any other calibrations after updating. On the topic of input shaping, both the X and Y axes have a definitive resonant frequency on the Q1 Pro, indicating that the motion system has good rigidity. The limiting axis is Y, with a maximum recommended acceleration of 7500 using the ZV shape. This is a noticeably better result than I obtained from the X Max 3, for which the X axis had multiple secondary vibrational modes. The maximum acceleration in X is 10,900. These are both well short of the advertised 20,000 mm per second squared acceleration. This isn't a Q1 specific issue. This is a global trend I've noticed on almost all printers I've tested. You can print with accelerations that high, but the details of your prints won't be as sharp due to the smoothing effect resulting from input shape. If you care about dimensional accuracy, you'd be wise to update the max Excel in the config with a more conservative value. The Clipper configuration as a whole seems to be quite well done. It's got a variety of value added features like adaptive meshing and time-lapse control, as well as some useful macros. The only thing I felt was missing was cancel object, but that's easy enough to add. Speaking of time-lapses, the Q1 Pro has a built-in 1080p camera to record videos or monitor your prints remotely, as well as an LED light strip to illuminate the interior. The resolution is configured to 640x480 by, by default, so if you want to get the best quality possible, make sure to switch that to 1080x720. So I think that's everything you need to know, and more. But do all of these ingredients combine to make a good printer? Well, yes, it seems that they do. I was very pleased with the quality of the prints off of this machine. They were equal or better in quality to the prints I've been getting off my other comparable printers. This Loki bus by Wexter looked darn good, and I had no issues printing this TPU tire. Chidi supplies a skinned version of Prusa Slicer with the printer, but I chose instead to use Orca Slicer. No profile is yet included for the Q1 Pro, but it was easy enough to port over the settings, and I'm sure an official one will be added soon enough. The usage experience was pleasant as well, for the most part. The touchscreen is responsive and feels well organized. The first layer was perfect every time. My biggest gripe, for which I'm not alone, is the filament change procedure. In a recent firmware update across their product line, GD removed the unload filament button from the LCD, offering instead a replace filament option. This requires that you remove the Bowden tube and cut the filament before purging what remains. You can then insert the new filament. I much prefer the integrated filament cutter as on the Bamboo Lab printers. An earlier version of the XSmart 3 had an integrated filament cutter. For whatever reason, it was removed in subsequent printers. 
including this Q1 Pro. Editor's note. In the latest firmware, they've actually restored the option for filament unloading. We now have the choice of using their manual method or the more traditional automatic method. They warn of potential extruder clogs with the latter, but it worked okay in my testing. All in all, I had a very positive experience with the Q1 Pro. I think Chidi's got a real contender on their hands here. At face value, it doesn't appear to be all that different from their previous generation of printers, but upon closer inspection, there are a variety of improvements that make this a much more polished product. The price point of $599 makes it very competitive, and in my opinion, easy to recommend. The ease of use makes it viable for an entry-level user, but it's not limited in its scope, meaning it's also a good option for a more experienced user. It's got a heated chamber, which is uncommon, especially at this price point. I only wish it was a little more compact in its size relative to its build volume. But I'd love to know what you think. Would you consider this over something like the P1S? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.